So in this video, I want to talk about the critical values for the chi-squared contingency table test and where to find them in the OCR MEI further maths formula booklet. So uh, here's the front cover. So we're going to scroll down until we hit page 13. Okay, so this is page 13. And let's just zoom in a little bit here. Okay, so what are we seeing here? Well, at the top here, you can see a sketch of uh, a chi-squared distribution. This is one particular one, uh, one type of one. They all look uh, fairly similar apart from when uh, you have uh, the degrees of freedom being one uh, and two. They're kind of uh, a little bit different. So how do we read values from the chi-squared distribution uh, critical value table here? Well, um, what you really want to do is you want to focus in on this right hand one. I'll explain what this left hand one uh, really is saying in a moment, but we're going to focus on the right hand one. This is the one that you're going to use 99 times out of 100 when you're doing this hypothesis test. So along the top, uh, you see P percent. So that's 10 percent significance value. Sorry, significance level, 5 percent significance level, two and a half, one and 0.5. Now, down the side, you'll see, uh, the, now this isn't V, this is nu, N-U, uh, a, a Greek letter, uh, which represents the degrees of freedom. Now, I'll explain what the degrees of freedom and how to, well, I'll explain what they are in the next video. How to calculate them, um, the number of degrees of freedom for a chi-squared contingency table test is the number of rows, take away one in your table, times the number of columns take away one. So if you had a three by three table, then it would be three take away one times three take away one, which is two times two. So new would be four. Okay, so if you were doing a 10% significance level where you had a three by three table, you go to new is four, go along, and 7.779 would be your critical value You that you would then compare your uh, chi-squared statistic against. And if the chi-squared statistic is greater than your critical value, then you can reject the null hypothesis. If it is less than the critical value, then you fail to reject. Okay, so it's always going to be that way round for us. Now, I said that I would explain what's going on this left-hand side. Well, this side, um, we're really looking at uh, the left-hand tail. Now, why would you look at the left-hand tail? Well, essentially, the reason why you do this is um, you may get a chi-squared statistic which is very small. And if it's very small, that means that the, um, the observed and expected frequencies were very close together. That would make the contribution small. So if the observed and expected values were very close together, you would get a chi-squared statistic, which is small. Now, if the chi-squared statistic is very small, so maybe smaller than a certain value, then you may have evidence to suggest that actually they're too close. Um, so it is to the point where it is unlikely that they would have been that close. So if uh, a scientist was conducting an experiment and they didn't get the results that they wanted, and uh, for some reason, um, some dishonesty maybe uh, crept in and they made up the results, but to make the results seem uh, reasonable, um, they ended up you calculating values that were actually close to the ex the expected values, then it may well turn out that the observed and expected are too close, and that then makes you consider well maybe those results aren't quite right that the statistics that were, the data that was gathered um, cannot cannot be trusted. Okay, so. Um, it's a slightly different problem when you're looking at that bottom tail. And I think, you know, it's worthwhile you having an understanding um, as to why 
that may occur. OK, but as I said, 99 times out of 100, you will be looking at the right hand set of values in order to conduct a chi-squared contingency table hypothesis test.